so I wanted to go through a few things um, that um, from last week. And so I did prepare a little bit of a, um, so I'm going to try and see if I can do that. I did a PowerPoint. Now. Let me see if I can put it on. Okay. Ooh. And let me know if that works. Um, okay. Can you see this? No. No. Bummer. But um, you're looking wonderful. I'm looking wonderful. <laughs> That's all that matters after all. Okay. Hold on. Um, let me, see. oh, I see what happened. Um, it has to be this way. Okay, share it and start the... Yeah. Okay, so hold on. Okay, do you, do you see it now? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so, oh. So, um, first, I, I thought I'd start with Gold Bada 29 because... Um, you're right, it is not on the trochanter, and yes, it has an association with the ASIS. It's supposed to be halfway between the greater trochanter and the ASIS in the middle when the person is lying on the side, which of course makes it very odd, um, you know, because that's really not, um, yeah, but yeah, so it's not on the greater trochanter. So what I call front gallbladder 29 is probably pretty much gallbladder 29. Um, so I'm probably just, um, adding uh, extra, um, you know, extra description to the point. But basically go to the trochanter and just go in front of it or, or even above it. Because gallbladder 29 will definitely be slightly above the trochanter. You're basically trying to get into the space of, of the joint to separate the joint, to separate the torso from the leg is really the whole point of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, but you're not going in like to the actual hip joints. You're not going in that. Close. Oh, well, there's muscles there. You're not really going to be, I mean, you know, okay, so I'm not sure. Can, can you, can you see the cursor? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the hip joint is really this thing. This is the hip joint. The, the greater trochanter is not is a hip, but it's not a joint. It's the, I guess this is the uh, minor trochanter or something, but the acetabulum. So the iliac crest and the, whatever this other trochanter is called, <laughs> the minimal <laughs> trochanter, <laughs> that's the hip joint. Okay, I know, there, there must be real terms for these things. Where's the cursor now? Okay, so, but the greater trochanter is really not um, part of the hip joint. It's yeah. part of the hip. In the same way that, say, the PSIS or the ASIS, the iliac bone is part of the joint here in the acetabulum, but the whole crest of it is not part of the hip joint. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? So you oh, would need like a good three-inch needle that is extremely flexible to be able to touch the joint, and more than three inches, I would assume, for most people, because what, what happens is you have, to, you have to go in from here then go all the way through and then curve the needle in order to get through the joint. The bone is, a, the bone is protecting the joint. Oop, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. The bone is protecting the joint um, from being exposed to the outside. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like on the right-hand side, the joint is, is here. Oh, oh damn. Oh, no, only getting worse. Okay, the joint is here, and that's, I would say, that's more than three inches on most people. Um, that's probably a good five inches, probably, on most adults uh, inside. And then the bone, the bone itself, the femur itself is covering it. So, so do you need, sorry, Abby, do you needle, needle it when somebody is prone or, or on their back? I wouldn't, okay. I, in an ideal situation, in order to get a better spacing for it, on the side is better. But since I don't like treating people on the side, uh, I like people treat. I like treating people either face up or face down. I tend to do it when they're face up. Okay. okay. Uh, if someone's very big and it's very hard, like you know, because then you can't. You, you know, there are some people that it's really impossible to figure out where their trochanter is because they're just so so much fat all over the place. Okay, then I might make a special effort and put them on the side and do it. But it's like it's just not what I prefer because um, part of the problem with treating people on the side for me, okay, is that your whole abdomen changes perspective. 
you know, with gravity, everything shifts, all the connective tissue is shifted, and then no reflex is where it's, it's supposed to be. I mean, even, you know, let's say the, the major landmark, which is the navel, is now two inches lower, <laughs> you know, because they're lying on their side. So everything gets shifted, and you can't know what's what. And to some extent, not, not quite the same, the same thing happens on the back also. So it's not the most convenient way to palpate people. Um, now, I am well aware that Kiko does this nowadays. She really likes, uh, seems to like um, doing, you know, treating people on the side because you can sort of check both sides at the same time. Um, to me, that's just, it's just not something I've adopted. So, so I do this point, um, you know, face up. <laughs> And with most people, you can figure out where their trochanter is. And you can go either in the front or above it, but basically you're trying to go an, into a situation where you're creating space between the leg and the torso. You know, that's the advantage of the point. Um, now, interestingly enough, since we're on the point, just for the sake of it, um, so it's called Zhu Liao. And Zhu, the way this is spelled, this is the way the point is spelled, I did not make this up, means to reside somewhere, to dwell somewhere, which, you know, can imply power also. Now, so Ellis, um, Andy Ellis in his book has basically changed the meaning of the word and he translates into squatting, okay, which is really not correct in my opinion. I think we lost Mary Jo. Oh. Did you? I hear you. Oh, I, I, okay. hear, I still hear you, Heavy. Oh, okay, okay. Your picture disappeared, so I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it does matter. Um, so Alice basically pretends that this character has an X on the left hand side has the character for the foot in it, which makes pronounced the same way and makes it into squatting. But to reside somewhere and to squat, they both imply power. You know how some people. Um, Lots of people, actually, most people. If we say you go to a meeting once a week or you, you know, well, say a parliament, everybody takes their spot. They squat in their spot. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it gives them a certain sense of power. Like, I know where I am in, I am in this room. And, you know, when I, well, when I was younger, you know, we used to, uh, in England, we used to squat um, into buildings that were abandoned. So that's taking power over. So the, the, you know, either way to reside or to squat mean kind of suggests power. And liao basically means um, the left hand side is a bone, and then it, it's like the sound of the wind whirling. Um, so it's like something that amplifies. So, you know, people translate it as a bone hole, as if it's a geographical location, and it, it, usually it is. Um, but what it really suggests is that it has the, ampli the capacity to amplify. Okay, so um, gallbladder 29 has this capacity to amplify power, the power of pushing up. I mean, when you squat, you're going to eventually come out of it. So you're pushing up. That's what, what happens. And so it allows you to separate the leg from the torso, which allows the diaphragm to open. Because if you're pushing down into the leg, you can't open the diaphragm. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So the next one, sorry, was that a question? Oh, okay. No. So, oh, okay. The next one I wanted to show you the uh, sacroiliac ligaments. So the ones in red are the actual sacroiliac ligaments. That's the, uh, sorry, sorry, the ones in green, the one in green on the left hand side is the actual sac sacroiliac, sacroiliac space, the space between the sacrum and the ilium. But to get a needle there for most people is very hard, which is why I pretty much take the red zone. Okay. And so you can see that the mass of the ligament itself goes over and I'm reaching it from the iliac side as opposed to in between. Does that, does, does that answer the question, Camille? These are really lovely diagrams. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Yes, well, really I, lovely. I pretty much stole the picture and then imposed a few things on it. <laughs> so, well, but it, you did a marvelous job. <laughs> hey, you know, power, PowerPoint is a very powerful tool. <laughs> Thankfully, you don't need to know how to draw. You just sort of say, put a circle here. <laughs> and thievery is a fabulous skill. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 
<laughs> and no, get really more and more popular by the minute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, so those are the sacroiliac ligaments, and those I use a lot for any sort of spinal problem. And again, also to, to sort of, because if these are tight, the whole spine, the whole back is going to fall onto the sacrum. And you have to remember that the, the, the tendency, the human tendency, because we are upright, is to congest in the waist. Okay, everything falls into the waist because there's no bone in between the iliac bone and the 12th rib. There is nothing holding you there except your spine, which is really not meant to, to carry weight. So it's really up to your abdominal muscles and, you know, the back muscles to, to lift you up, um, which they really are not built so much to do. So what happens is we all, we're, we're constantly sinking down into the pelvic floor. And so the sacroiliac ligaments, when you needle them, you're basically sending a message to, to, to lengthen and um, pull out the spine. Okay, and that's why they're, I mean, I use them on almost everyone. Um, I mean, that and do too are kind of like very, very, very common points for me. And then the third thing I was talking about, correct tendons. Um, so the Jen Zong and Jen Jing, the correct tendon and correct ancestor. And I think there's a third one above it, um, but Miriam never talked about it, but they, they tend to come in threes in the tongue um, lineage. Um, these are, you know, level with kidney three and seven, except they're on the Achilles tendon. But this whole area, this whole bladder channel, okay, is basically, um, Huh, I'm missing a little part here, which I wonder if will come up if I press on something. But anyway, this whole back of the, so this is a left foot. So the bladder channel is either in the center or the gallbladder channel stays on the left and the kidney channel will be more on the right, on the inside. Okay, so it's the little toe that we're seeing here, not the big toe. So that whole area from the center towards the gallbladder channel, all the way up to about three tsun maybe, below, up, up to the crest of the gastrocnemius. This whole area is an area that affects the neck, in my opinion, oh. um, you yeah. know, and, and sort of relaxes the brain. That, that's what I meant, you know, when I said, you know, what, one of the things that we're always trying to do is take the brain from an, the activity from the front and move it to the back, to sort of relax the brain towards the back sink the brain backwards these all these points do that and i'm missing oh okay here they are okay so what what i'm showing you is that all these points on the bladder channel are called either to receive or to support or they have the character yang in them yang meaning basically to to lift to 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 jack up Okay, so it's, it's interesting that every single point on the bladder channel, except for 60, Hunlun, um, has this character in it, one of these characters in it. Okay, so the, there is a very clear understanding that from the gastrocnemius that you're giving support, you're receiving the weight of the body and giving support to lift it up. Okay, and that it will affect the, well, it's not implied in the name, although well, it's implied slightly in the name. So in, you know, because you're getting to bladder six is the other receiving, except it's receiving light, guang. Uh, oh, which I spelled wrong, but never mind. Uh, so, um, but they all release the back of the neck. Okay, so that's that. And I think the next one, okay, the next one's just a bunch of fun because remember I said- Oh, beautiful. <laughs> well, I can't do this. <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is about trying to show you the pericardium channel what happens when you're actually standing on your hand it's the we can remember twi exists in the spleen the kidney and the bladder channels but in the arm the twi in my opinion exists in the pericardium of course it doesn't say the spleen uh, kidney and um, bladder are actually mentioned in the link shoe in the bladder um, I mean, in the pericardium, it never says that, but that's my assumption because you can see how the pericardium, once you put weight on it, it's the pericardium channel that push, pushes down and lifts up at the same time. And I think, whoops, okay. So here I have two more pictures of that. So for example, you can see her pericardium six, uh, pericardium four, you know, three fingers below pericardium three. 
okay, uh, which is the she point, and she means, you know, I, I don't know what a cleft means exactly, but it means, in Chinese, it means like a crack, an open, mm -hmm. okay, and I have another one, yeah, this is actually me, this is me, but not standing on my hand, <laughs> <laughs> You can see two, um, two kind of cracks. One is um, about three fingers below pericardium three, and one is about five, you know, maybe five and below. So you can see these cracks or openings that are happening in the pericardium channel, you know, which I'm relating to Chui, which is why I'm saying the pericardium channel is so popular, um, you know, and why it's such a good friend of the spleen. Okay. And that's it. And I think we're, oops, hold on. Okay, stop. Okay. Any, all right. So th th those were things that, you know, you, you know, you asked for clarifications about point locations and stuff from last week, I think. And I may have missed something. Um, so let me know. Would you send those slides along? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so, all right. Anything else? <laughs> There actually was something at the end, and I'm sorry I meant to check it, but I had said I had said at the time, oh my, we're you know we're almost at the end of our time, and um, do you remember what it was though? I, I'm looking at it right now, but but if Mary Jo, if you want to jump in with a question, while I figure it out, just something that occurred to me, Abby, not totally not related to what we're talking about now, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, when you s say that you believe acupuncture breaks down the connective tissue, mm -hmm. it aligns. It's real lines. Uh, real lines. It's better. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, when I'm needling, I'm thinking of breaking down gummy, you know, congestion. But the um, the purpose is to align it so all the the connective tissue is all aligned. Therefore, it's more conductive. That's just my imagery. But yeah. go ahead. It was just that um, it just occurred to me when I, um, I thought about pregnancy. Actually, I've never heard you mentioning points that are contraindicated in pregnancy. Do you doesn't <laughs> tally in with your kind of um, like okay. if you if this connective tissue? Okay, I a few things on pregnancy that I could say, which is not a huge amount because I don't, I don't, I treat some pregnant women every so often. It's definitely not my my big thing. Just like you know, fertility is not the, a big thing for me. I've done some, you know, some women in pregnancy come because of certain issues or whatever, um, you know, whether it's morning sickness or you know. Um, blood pressure or or, or, di or diabetes and you know whatever it is um there's different things but it's not you know i'm i'm very not i'm very clearly not a mom <laughs> you know so it, i'm not attractive um for for the for the pregnant crowd so to speak um so i can't say i have a huge amount of experience in it what i will say so but for me, most of the contraindications with pregnancy in terms of points, for example, I totally use spleen six on pregnancy. Okay. That's, what I, that's what I was, um, you know, spleen six yeah. kind of comes into a lot of the protocols, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, well, spleen six, spleen nine, pericardium is a protocol for, for high blood pressure, which is really important in, for some women in pregnancy. Otherwise, you know, I'm not so sure it's so important. But the thing is, so I totally do it. I don't have any problem doing uh, spleen six in pregnancy. And my assumption is the reason why it's not so much the point as much as it's this type of stimulation. If you're just putting a needle in and you, you're just, the manipulation is very mild. I don't think there's a big issue. I think the big issues come when you stimulating points very strongly. And then, you know, um, but if, you know, with, with this, with the number one needle, like, I, you know, I've just never had a problem. Of course, I'm aware that the book says. Now, since large intestine 4 is not a point that I use, I don't really care that it's contraindicated. Um, and I, what, what's the other? There's another one, maybe go about a 21 or something. Um, yeah. It's supposed to be contra. I mean, there's a few of the. Bladder 60, I don't think. Sorry? Is bladder 60? Maybe. Uh, I honestly don't know. So, again, I don't use bladder 60 a huge amount. Um, so it's not really all that in, in my conscience. I mean, I use it it's as part of Ihikon, 
you know, if they had brain injury or, um, you know, a tight neck, for example. So it's a, another one, it's a correct tendon sort of point, quote unquote, meaning releasing the back of the neck. Um, you know, I, I could use gallbladder 39 uh, instead. In fact, I often substitute in econ gallbladder 39 for UB60. Um, but I think this, if the stimulation is mild, yeah, and again, I'm not the big expert, so I can say, hey, I do it all the time, but my all the time is like maybe five to 10 pregnant women a year. You know, that's nothing compared to people who are treating 30 pregnant women every week. And they might say, oh, no, Avi doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. I have no clue. Um, I, I don't know. All I can say is that up to now, I've had no problem. And I know, I know, do know people who do a lot more pregnant women and say it's not an issue. Um, but it could be an issue in terms of uh, liability should something go wrong in their, in their pregnancy. And then they, they might want to blame you or something. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, no, that's in terms of the lining, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Um, no, that answers my question because um, I, I think it's what it's had in my mind that it was probably the ex deeper stimulation that might cause the problem. Yeah. But as well as that, I tw twice I treated two pregnant ladies um, because they they were at their due date and they actually wanted to bring on labour. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually did all did complicated yeah. points and actually nothing happened at all anyway. So. <laughs> Well, you for should have gotten a hammer. For a good week or more in one case, I think. So. Yeah. Something no, I, well, obviously all these precautions, you know, are, you know, you don't, you know, when they're coming to, to induce, it's a whole different ballgame. That's, that's exactly what you, you're doing. All the points that are contraindicated by TCM. Um, but what I was going to say, the only contraindication for me in pregnancy is the obvious one, which, well, maybe not so obvious. I don't palpate the abdomen, which means I lose a fair amount of my uh, capacity to diagnose. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't, you know, you, well, there's two things, actually. You can't, I can't really palpate the abdomen because um, you're pressing on something, you know. In the early stages, you're pressing against a fetus that's not formed well enough, and you don't want to put too much pressure on, and you don't know what how much to pressure how much to pressure would be. Again, because I, it's not what I do constantly. I might have known had I been doing it all the time. And the other thing is, later in pregnancy, when they come for other problems, you know, to, more towards delivery after the sixth, seventh month, um, they can't lie. They should not be lying down flat. So I'm putting a lot of pillows under the chest to make them more inclined, uh, which means that even if I wanted to palpate the abdomen, let's say I, I, you know, everything is now shifted because they're now half sitting, half lying down. So everything is different. So with pregnant women, I use primarily the neck, um, whatever I find on the limbs, fire points, whatever, things like that. But I don't, I would palpate the chest, um, but I don't palpate abdomen at all on pregnant women and certainly don't needle it. Uh, me. And I know that some people do. I am aware that people do. Um, so what do you tend to do instead? Palpate the neck, uh, palpate the back. Uh, of course, they're, they're the ones who are always going to be on their side um, when I treat pregnant women, if I treat the back. Um, and palpate the, the feet and the hands for fire points or whatever else I can find in the channel. And oh, I yes. work, so I work with you know, so actually it's a very good thing because what happens is, so you have a theory, you know, say they came for preeclampsia or, or they're worried about it. And, you know, so you, you, your spleen six and spleen nine, nine now can only resolve reflexes in the neck and in the foot or in the leg or in the arm or in the back. So the abdomen is kind of off limits. So it makes, so, you know, often, listen, there are a lot of patients who show nothing in the abdomen. It's not all that unusual for people not to show anything in the abdomen. It can happen. So you, you, sometimes you have to work with dogma. So you work with the dogma and test it against the more limited landscape that you do have. You know, if I was really good with pulses, I should be able to take the pulse and touch spleen six and say, oh, the pulse is much better, but I don't have this ability. Um, you know, it's kind of like, I know there are people, who uh, there are a lot of people who claim to have it, um, especially Toyohari people. Um, 
I don't fully trust that they, you know, I mean, I can feel pulses change, but I can't say it's because I touched a point. There's a huge difference between being able to say I can feel the pulse changing and having the confidence, the assuredness that it's because of what you did, because the pulse changes all the time. So unfortunately, I don't have that capacity. Anything else? Whoops. Did I? Oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm still here. I just, I just didn't have anything else. I, I look back at what was confusing me last time, and I couldn't quite recapture. My notes seem clear to me. So whatever it was that that didn't seem clear, I, I, I I've lost that train of thought. <laughs> but That's I awesome. might go back and listen to it because it it was a significant lecture. So okay, yeah, no yeah. If it comes up, let me know. I'm happy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Mary Jo? Yeah. Well, I was just something that was in my mind was Evie was um, the extraordinary channels, mm -hmm. and I know you have. Um, a slightly different way of um, treatment than just using the opening, opening yeah. and closing points and that. So it might, you may not get much done today, but I was just wondering maybe if you went through some of that theory, you know, of when you would use extraordinary vessels and what okay. point you'd consider. Okay. Maybe so, for another day, if it is, that's fine. No, no, it's fine. We can, and I think at one point we went through that, you know, because I remember Camille participated a fair amount in that, you know, like Jeffrey has a whole model for these eight extraordinary meridians names. So I have two modes of working with these. One has very little to do with the opening points. And that is, pre, that is based on, the, on Jeffrey's model that is a psychological model, primarily. Uh, or I use it primarily as a psychological model. And, you know, so the kind of like buzzwords there is like um, the Chang has to do with your, you, how you resonate with your blueprint. The Ren has to do with how you resonate with, um, well, I don't know resonate, but, you know, like people who have issues with their mother, like mother was overly protective or mother wasn't there for them at all, one way or the other. So they got, you know, they, they have Ren, Ren my issue. Uh, the do, which I don't understand all that well, you know, I can, I can tell you theoretically, it has to do with moving away from mother, being able to, to, uh, to, to it, the spine is the capacity to look forward and, and reach out towards it. So separating from mother. Uh, the chow vessels are, have to do with how I take on masks or take on roles, you know, my identities, which keep changing. Um, and towards myself, that is the yin chow, and towards the world, yang chow. And the yin way, the yang, the yang way uh, are how we make transitions long term, like the so called seven, eight year cycles, um, both in terms of towards myself, yin way, and towards the world, yang way. And the dai is the uh, so called garbage can. Um, it's where things that we. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jeffrey used that word. I did not invent it. I call it the attic, but... <laughs> what? The <laughs> attic? Yeah, but the attic is above you. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> that's, that sounds more like the Baumai leads to the attic. <laughs> How funny. But, did you have different, you use different points, so Abby, don't you think? No, they're not different. Okay, so the different, the big, the big thing when using that is what you're doing is you're tracing the channel. You're picking up the points along the channel, which are actually other points channels, except in the case of the Ren and the Do. Uh, so for example, in, if you're doing the in Chow treatment, um, you're doing kidney six, kidney eight, uh, Maybe stomach 12, depending on whether you believe it's part of that channel or not, stomach nine and bladder one, okay? Uh, and you might be palpating along the channel um, to give them a sensor, or you might be talking about the areas of the body, for example, because it goes through the groin, okay? And the genitalia, and it goes through the diaphragm and the chest. So you, you could be talking about it. So to give them awareness of what, and you might be also telling them, talking about when as you needle a point you will well you don't have to but i will explain to them what their point name is and how it relates to the theme so saying 
in the sense of the yin way and I chose the, uh, the yin chow. I chose the yin chow on purpose because it has very few points. Um, so, <laughs> it's, uh, well, it's faster. <laughs> so the kidney six is um, Tao high, meaning uh, shining light on the ocean, the shining ocean, right? Um, so shining light on the ocean mean the ocean, it's the ocean of life. So to look at, at my life, so it's uh, the yin, yin chow is considered the meditation channel in a way. How I, I'm looking at my identities. I'm meditating on my identities, on who I am. As I meditate on my identity, I come to trust myself, or as I shed my identities, hopefully, maybe. Uh, I come to kidney eight, um, um, xiao jin, uh, uh, the intersection of trust. So I can, tr I can build some trust for myself. Uh, overcoming the obstacles of one's genitals, um, you know, which not necessarily in terms, can be in terms of, um, you know, sexual desires, etc., but in terms of the, you know, latching onto self, because the, the purpose of the genitals is to create more selves. <laughs> I'm recreating myself, you know, through my genitals sort, sort of thing. And then the next obstacle is the diaphragm or the chest is the obstacle of, can I open up my chest? Can, can I overcome the, this need to be uh, myself and reproduce myself and take care of myself, blah, 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 and open up to everything, you know, quote, unquote, to can I love everyone or, you know, something like that, that's opening the chest. At that point, when that happens, I can welcome, the, stomach nine is welcome human, okay? I can welcome the person that I am, and as a result, I can now have uh, bladder one, bright vision, okay? And bright vision also um, means um, great understanding uh, spiritually. It's the same expression, like prajna is, is the same expression. Um, so, so that I give them a, a sort of an understanding of the, um, of the philosophical container, so to speak, of the needling. And then you can one can ask is is it really the needles or is it the, um, the little dharma talk that they get along the the, the, the way and the needles are just there to kind of like oh, relax have, have fun for the next forty five minutes and and contemplate this you know contemplate your life um, I can't answer the question um, you know which one it is but it seems to work decently enough with, with you know with the two. And I actually ask, Jeffrey often talked about asking permission. I took that a, a little bit literally. Um, you know, that I literally ask them, I say, well, does this statement resonate in your life? Do you want to work on um, trying to pry, pry that statement? And if they say, that doesn't sound like me, even though I may have the judgment, it totally sounds like them. <laughs> they, they're just in total denial, whatever I might think for myself fine no no big deal i just skip that channel because there's no point in forcing someone um to do this so this is more like a quote-unquote psychotherapeutic modality or a spiritual modality or something like that the other way i'm now so if i'm doing yin wei for example okay yin chow the opening point is kidney six but yin wei the opening point is pericardium six so yes i will do pericardium six and then do kidney nine go along the spleen points in the abdomen, etc. you know, liver 13, liver 14. But I'm not doing, I'm doing pericardium six, but without Sanjiao five. I don't, I don't have this, the need to do the other, the, the coupled point. Oh, no, I'm sorry, pericardium six is spleen four, I believe is the coupled point. Uh, I, I, it's not something that I'm going to do, unless I have a re unless I have some other reason, but it's not automatic. The other way that I use eight extra channels is very different. Although I sometimes combine them, especially for the people where I feel, you know, either they or I feel like, this is like going into all this, you know, quote unquote psychobabble is way too much right now. And they're not open to it or they don't want, or whatever it is. And I need to go lighter. What I will do, I will use the Kawai method with the, with the iron pumping cords, um, the Chow Chow or the Wei Wei, methodology. Now, uh, those I really use primarily for physical issues, and you have a number of ways to look at it. So the chow chow, which is, um, so the lung seven or lung eight, usually I, I use, lung eight gets the red clip, 
connected to the right side, bladder 62. Okay, so that's opening the two opening coupled points of the chow. And then on the, sorry, lung seven goes to kidney six. Sorry, I'm sorry. Lung, lung seven on the left to kidney six on the right. That's one cord and the red clip is on the left on lung seven. The other cord goes from UB62 on the left side to small intestine three on the right side. And the red clip of that cord is also on the left on bladder 62. Okay. You can do that with needles or you can just tape the, um, the, the, the clips on and spark them. Okay. Now those, that's supposed to be a good treatment for anything below, below the diaphragm. Okay, lower abdomen. There is another older way of diagnosing um, to distinguish between chow chow and wei wei, which in my opinion is not. Um, so originally I was taught that 80% of all patients will fall into one or the other. Well, that's absolutely not true. Um, so the way you diagnose is if they have tension on the line of bladder 13, the lung line, either on the do, the inner bladder or the outer bladder, um, that indicates chow chow. If they have pressure pain below, meaning UB14, UB15 lines, pericardium and heart lines, that's supposed to suggest uh, way, way treatment. That diagnosis, and I remember someone asked Kawhi about it at some point, and he just looked like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but it was like, like, why are you asking me this? <laughs> so, um, and I personally have found that, you know, I would say 80% of the patients do not fall into one or the other category. It's not so. But occasionally you'll find a person that will give you clarity. The way way treatment, which is pericardium six on the left, spleen four on the right, and again, the red clip is on the left side, with um, gallbladder 41, which can be anywhere between gallbladder 40 and gallbladder 41. It's actually usually closer to gallbladder 40. You're looking for a puffiness there. Gets the red and hooked onto Sanja 5 on the right. The way way is supposed to be good for chest issues. Okay. Um, so occasionally there'll be a person, you know, I don't use this a huge amount. What I like about this is because I use it without needles. So first of all, people are very sensitive to needles. I'll use that and they can... Interestingly enough, they don't mind the sparking, but they, the people who don't like needles, it's a, usually a mental objection. Um, they don't seem to mind the spark, but they do mind needles. So I'm eliminating a bunch of needles. By, I, can give, I can offer them a treatment with no needles or minimal, I can then add more needles you know, to it. So I've, I've done something with literally no needles. Um, and people who, again, like I said, you know, I feel like there is a strong psychospiritual emotional component in this, um, but I, it's not the right time for me to like lay it on heavily, you know, like confront it fully or whatever. Um, then I'll do that and see what happens. And these treatments, the, the um, opening, the the opening and couple points with the cords are very. Um, <sighs> They have a certain profoundness to them. You know, people, you know, they're very relaxing. They, they, they do something. They definitely, I mean, most acupuncture treatments do, but they, they definitely have a strong effect. The treatments where you're actually tracing the channel, needling the points on the channel, you don't have to needle every single one. For example, in the REN, that's not what you know, you're not going to needle every point from, you know, REN 2 all the way to REN 23, I mean, or 24, that's absurd. So you're choosing your major ones. Um, but, you know, the ones where you trace the channel, definitely if the person has basically given permission to it and they, they say, yes, I resonate with the statement, these are, these are the kind of treatments where people get up and they start, they want to tell you about their whole lives and how, you know, they, they, they now have vision, you know, it's as if they went on a mushroom trip, basically. You know, that's, that's, the, those are, that, that, that's the kind of treatment that those are. Um, the core treatments are not quite mushroom trips. There are maybe a little bit of marijuana. Um, you know, it's just a little, a little puff here and there. And acupuncture in general is just like, okay, I, very relaxing, nice meditative experience. You know, can I come next week and, and have some fun? <laughs> sort of, that, that would be like the scale I would put it um, in terms of general Mr. Toro. Uh, so... Um, 
that that's that that would be my um, my take. And I have no resonance at all. I don't know anything about when people say men right side or men left side, women blah blah side, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I really don't know any, you know, it's like I look at it and I go, I don't know where they came from. And there was a question recently on Facebook about someone who asked about someone, a girl, uh, a 14 year old girl who said, I notice you're always needling the right side. And she wanted to know why. And he said, well, you know, for women, I needle, but I said, whatever. And then she said, but you know, I'm, I consider myself gender fluid. <laughs> So then he was wondering which side he should do and should he switch sides each week or, you know, to me, I just don't, don't understand, don't know. I, I'm not saying it does, it isn't relevant. I'm just saying that I don't. Um, so, you know, I know there are descriptions where you need a particular side. The opening point should be on the X side for men and the opposite side for women. I, that doesn't, doesn't apply to me. I don't understand it. So. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Can I mention a couple things about yes, that? Of course. One is is that is that sometimes the channel will tell you which side is in trouble. Like particularly, mm -hmm. for example, with Chow, mm -hmm. you, you can see because the person will be very tight, for example, on the Yin Chow side and very flaccid on the Yang Yang Chow side. Mm -hmm. And, and so the foot will, will tend to curve medially. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter which, you know, male or female, right or left, you know, yeah. if, if you see that, that is an important chow my finding. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, it, it's a, it's a signal that, that, you know, if you see that compatible with other symptoms, that, that that's a clear indication that, that you want to needle that. Um, also, Jeffrey does hybrid hybrid treatments of oh. two two eight x channels at a time. So, so he might, for example, um, you know, do a combined Yin Chao Mai Ren Mai, and so you you might be using you know kidney six on the right and following the yin chow channel on the right and then and then bringing it back down the ren mai and needling lung seven on the left as an opening point there so you can use it in combination as well okay so yeah interesting i i haven't seen jeffrey do that um so you know but i you know it's so when Jeffrey started teaching um, in San Francisco, when I brought Jeffrey in the 90s, we used to have clinical days, and at, at some point he was treating in my clinic. Um, but I have oh wow Jeffrey actually treat oh wow I wish I'd been there for that. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, we always think that in the past things were better. It's a, I mean that already well. it's already in Sue and Chapter One. It already dictates that we should always think that in the past things were nicer. <laughs> <laughs> so I miss the opportunity for what you know to be an, an ancient ch sage in the old days when everything was fabulous. <laughs> um, but no, so. All I'm saying is that that that's um, and I haven't really seen Jeffrey treats probably since since the year 2000. I've seen him treat in class, you know, sort of treat. He not, he he hasn't been needling in class. No, since I've seen him, so I can't say. Um, also, um, so in t I think and and so it's interesting because my concept is, that's really interesting because. I, I always think that if I'm doing yin chow, I'm going to do it both sides. I've never done one side. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and of course, with the yin chow, the opening point is already in the channel itself. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey used to, this, I'm specifically emphasizing used to because I don't know what he, what he says, you know, in terms of now, um, used to be very clear that he did not feel that the opening points um, not only that, that, that you don't have to couple them, but he, that he, the opening points do not on their own, quote unquote, reach the, um, reach the, the uh, extraordinary channel. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, so he, he said, well, you need to actually do the channel itself. On the other hand, Jeffrey's very, when Jeffrey says something like, um, I know this is speculation on my part, fair enough. 
um, so um, or in interpretation, when Jeffrey says needling the opening point is not enough to reach the channel, the extraordinary channel, so periconium six is not enough to reach uh, the yin wei. That doesn't mean that does not automatically mean you have to needle yin wei, because to Jeffrey the intention overrides everything. So it's not enough to just needle pericardium six, but if you have you're needling pericardium six and adding the right intention to it, maybe you are reaching the yin way. You know, so it's it's all a little bit odd. Um, you know, it's it's all very subject. You know, yeah, subjective is a fair word. You know, you 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 need to figure out what you want to do with it. Um, but so in terms of which side. For the opening points, I think is is the was your question, Mary Jo. Um, yeah, I, Camille, does Jeffrey have an answer for that? On which side for opening points? Oh well, generally write. speaking, he does right for women, left for men okay. with extraordinary vessels. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Eve, and um, for the opening point at least. Um, well, for the, the, whole the whole channel. So if he's doing yin chow or, or yin wei or something, he'll just do one side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's an that's a interesting. Oh, and what? Wait, wait, wait. And are we talking about like applying essential oils or stones on it, or you know? Oh well, you know now all he does is he he does treatment plans, and the you know so the person is expected to go home and be treated by their own acupuncturist. Right. Oh, so when he does a clinical day, he do, he he just talks and gives you plans like acupuncture, herbs, essential oils, diet, blah blah blah, and but he doesn't actually do it. Yes. Ah, interesting. Okay, gotcha. I, okay. But they're amazing treatments. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, when he's done me and I've gone home, uh, extraordinary things happened. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, he does have an extraordinary ability to relate to people. Yeah, um, you know, there, there's no question about it. He he can. I mean, he doesn't always uh, resonate with every single person. Granted, but you know, but when he does, it's 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 quite profound. Um, I mean, he's the kind of person that can say to people, "Oh, you know, um, you you have entities in you," and the person will look at him straight and say, "Oh." Yes, you're right. <laughs> you're thinking, wow, <laughs> that's really odd. Like, <laughs> you know, most people you'd have to like, if, if you thought you wanted to do some sort of possession treatment on them, so to speak, you would coach it quite a bit. It, it would take you a while to get there. <laughs> you know, with Jeffrey, you just kind of like spurts it out and <laughs> they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, he, he really is uncanny in some ways. Um, you know, his ability to relate to people is very, very good. And so, yeah, so it's not surprising that he can give you a treatment plan only. You know, most of us wouldn't be able to do that. We don't. Well, I mean, if I can, can I, if I can share yeah. one story, like yeah. uh, just to give you an example, I, we did a class on observing different aging patterns, you know, Tai Yang, Xiao Yang, mm -hmm. how those different types aged mm -hmm. um, posturally. Mm -hmm. and and how to observe that trend and reverse it mm -hmm. so so i got to be one of the the patients in that weekend uh -huh. and he prescribed he prescribed points and herbs and all of that so i went home and i made one bag of the herbs and i drank a half a cup before i went to bed mm -hmm. and i i woke up in the middle of the night with this piercing pain in my side and I started massaging it and massaging it and massaging it. And, you know, and then I thought, oh, you know, I, maybe I need some needles. So I had some in my bedside table and I grabbed the needles out and, you know, and the whole time I'm in bed and this is going on about two hours oh. that, that I'm just feeling all these weird things changing mm -hmm. with my posture. Well, you know, at, at some point I needed to, to stand up. And as I stood up, I suddenly realized that I had to shift and move my internal organs because my body posture had changed so much that I no longer fit together anymore. <laughs> wow. And that's half a cup of herbs. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very cool. I have other stories like that, but yeah. I think it's quite impressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, he can write me a treatment plan anytime. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> as as long as the treatment plan is not to make you older. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I don't think he does that. <laughs> no. Well, moving to so. towards immortality or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, that is his realm now. He, he he announced quite a while ago that he wasn't going to treat talk about treating diseases anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> but you know, you mentioned you mentioned if I could also interject one other thing, yes. which I which I I really am very fond of is that that when you when you said you you sort of glazed over the dew channel a little bit, and one thing one thing that I really like in his description of the dew. Mm -hmm. is that when when uh um you know he talks about the chong as the genetic blueprint the unfolding of it the 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 ren being the 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 sea of yin the resources and the du being the sea of yang he talks about how in a little baby mm -hmm. that that there's a moment of activation um where du force uh i'm sorry where du 14 yeah. starts to activate and that's the moment that the child starts to lift their own head yeah. and look around the world and start to see things. And that's the beginning of, of our differentiation as, as, you know, as moving, Something. able, active, pe you know, humans. And then, and then later there's the activation of do four. And that's when we start to wiggle around and move our spine. And it's the beginning of activating our legs and becoming mobile. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the pericardium channel also that he talks about the next, the next important point to activate is, is pericardium eight. And, and that's what causes us to reach out to the world. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just, I like that imagery very yeah. much. Yeah. Then of course he also talks about how, as we reach out to the world, then mommy slaps our hand yeah. and says, don't touch that. And that is the, that is, what forms the pericardium, the protective layer around the heart when mm -hmm. you start to feel mm -hmm. like you have to protect yourself. Oh, interesting. So. Well, <laughs> so I, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, so I would say the thing about, for me, the statement of the do, so I actually don't, don't have good resonance with any of the young channels in the eight of story. So I don't have a good understanding of, you know, mm. I, you're, yes, I can tell you that the do is, you know, the, the actual construction, the moving away that, you know, blah, 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 but I don't, or in the, the young chow and, and the young way, but I don't, I, I, I understand, or at least I, I think I understand or whatever. I resonate with the yin, the yin statements, I don't quite understand the yang statements. So I'm not a good person hmm. to like, um, explain those because I've, for example, I've, I don't do yang chow treatments. I don't do yang wei treatments. I, it's just, you know, I, I've never seen a patient that I can say, yes, this is, um, that it's clear in my mind. Oh yes, this is yang wei or yang chow or something like that. Um, and by the way, with regards to the pericardium, just a funny um, anecdote. <laughs> sort of, well, not a, you know. So Jeffrey used to talk about. So the child, um, you know, he the child takes things into pericardium eight, and then he unites the heart channel. He puts, you know, because that's how a child, a small child, explores the world. They take something and they put them in the mouth, right? Um, so, you know, and the, the tongue is the expression of the heart. So that's a unification of the heart and, you know, with pericardium eight. And then he would say, and so that's why, you know, we fall in love with people who allow us to put things in our mouth. Uh, so <laughs> kind of a similar understanding to mother, mother says no, but then later you, you're, you're, you're wanting that anyway. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, he has a lot of really interesting ways of looking um, at what, what, how, how do these things come up um, mm -hmm. and how do different areas of the body, um, relate philosophically to, to statements. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, so yeah. So if, if you, if you at some point, you know, yeah, probably not today. Um, you know, want to talk about, you know, the, the young, uh, the, the the do the young way and the 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 young chow the the die I get the die I get you know attic or basement or or garbage can or sewage or whatever that I have no problem with <laughs> the other young ones I have a problem with um, you know I, well I I mean actually I mean I think I I think I could do it very briefly because I wouldn't have a huge amount to say so if if you want I could give you the two minute version sure but but um 
the yang chow, if it's, if it's weak, I mean, yang chow is about how we assert ourselves in the world, as you said. And so I think of the yang chow, if it's weak, as someone who isn't able to assert themselves, isn't able to stand up for themselves, you know, me meekly sits by, you know, in the corner, um, um, you know, no, I don't want the promotion. I, I, I just, you know, I want to, I want to be in the corner all by myself. No, I won't ask for a raise. No, I won't, you know, or, or like even, even someone who, who, you know, maybe stays in an abusive relationship because they can't, they, they don't have the young energy to, to assert themselves to, to move out of an inappropriate situation. So, you know, I, I see that as, as primarily a lack of assertiveness. Mm. Um, okay. The excess in the young Chow Mai would be more someone who, who has to change the world. You know, what do you mean you're going to sit back and, and, and allow this social injustice to occur, but like they do it to a, a, an excess where they have to change everybody and everything and, you know, a, a, and they, they're exhausting themselves you know, um, I'm trying to change the world. Um, so, so, um, someone who's overly assertive, overly controlling, overly demanding, that might be a yang chow mai. And again, you can see it physically in the, 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 um, the structure of the foot. Oh, you know, another one on deficiency. I have, uh, I have a client this is a perfect Yang Chow Mai case. He's, he's very, he's very famous. He's extremely um, respected in his field, very wealthy man. And, and he feels like it, you know, he's, a, he's really very humble inside and doesn't feel like he deserves all of these, you know, acclaims. And, mm -hmm. and as a result, the Yin Chow Mai, the, you know, the sense of self, the self-esteem is very tight. And um, the Yang Chow Mai has chronic pain. In fact, he came to me for ankle pain after an unsuccessful surgery for it. So that would be sort of a classic Yang Chow Mai case. Um, and it's interesting because when he moved out of being head of his company into a more um, emeritus kind of role, you know, supporting consultant role in the company, his ankle pain went away completely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would be a classic Yang Chao Mai. Um, um, Yang Wei Mai um, would more be about having the Yang energy to make transitions. So someone who, who wants to make a change um, but, but just can't seem to get the impetus to do it. Like I know, you know, I see a better life for myself, but I cannot make the transition or, or also somebody perhaps who, who is, is not coping well with, with, um, you know, uh, and more for the young side, maybe more for men, but who not coping well with their aging process, not coping well with, with um, you know maybe maybe r retirement and losing power in the world, lo losing status of you know whatever they did in their work life, that kind of thing. So, so people who either don't have the energy to change or um, or are fighting against the changes that are happening to them. So it's but, interesting. Yeah, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say. I mean, that's I think the the fat, you know, like just the, the, the fast version of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting because um, because those statements in large extent can be said about Yin Chao and Yin Wei as well. So the way Jeffrey, uh, what I always, you know, Jeffrey had this thing about, um, is it me or is it the world? So mm -hmm. when they say it's the world, you know, like, so, you know, it's all the circumstance, it's about the world it's the yang, and when it's about me, it's the yin channel. So I, I guess for me, because by personality, it tends to be, the, I, I happen to, I, I think I am a yin chao or, you know, kind. Um, you know, it's hard for me to relate to the yang chao and the yang way. I, you know, the, the, the blame of on the world doesn't work well for me. Mm -hmm. You know, so, or it doesn't work well for me in terms of understanding it. 
Well, and I think that he do, he does see them as as intrinsically related. related. That that if you know if one is deficient, the other could be excess. Yeah. That's a very common pattern. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting, you know, that it's um, yeah, it's it's not so. Um, you know, we each make of it. You know, we we, we create our ability with within our own ability to treat. We create something out of it. Uh, which may not be, well, which may yeah, not that's very to the true. origin. I mean, we <laughs> see it all the time. Yeah, yeah. For my doctorate, I interned with Holly Guzman, and we were mm -hmm. constantly, really, that's how you do that treatment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do it so differently, you know. And we've had the same teachers, you know. So it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all right. So then, um, thank you. I'm confused because I can see different parts of different statements <laughs> relating to me. I can see a little yes. bit of myself in a lot of the planets. <laughs> That's oh, have we just confused you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, 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 come in. <laughs> oh. No. This is, I will say this, that once you, when you start touching these kinds of subjects, part of the, th part of the process is to let it um, wash over you. And affect you, and then at some point there may there may be some better clarity. But at the beginning, it will because the thing is part of it. It gets very personal. That's why you know. That's why I'm saying very clearly, I don't relate to the young channels because that hasn't been. That you know, you have to give it time to just like wash over you and become you. And the very first stage for most of for most people is they apply, they they sort of look at it and say, well, wait a second, I can be all these things. And that's part of the confusion because we are all these things. I mean, you know, it's not like the, you know, it says 30% of the population have a, an interesting meridian called Ying Chao and another 40% have something called Ying Wei and another 10% have Dai. You know, we all, we have them all, you know, but we have... Um, ways in which we might be more um, leaning towards or utilizing one, but it's it's bound to be that way. That I'm like, wait a second, I'm exactly this, and then you go, no, but I'm exactly this. But we're, you know, it's like you know, I'm a Libra and a Virgo and a Taurus and a Black. You know, I'm all of these things, um, which is problematic in a way. Um, so that what I often you know, people see me go to Jeffrey's classes and they say, and everybody comes with their little laptop. And of course, I couldn't type on the laptop that fast anyway. I mean, I would have to take notes. And they sort of- It's go, exhausting. Oh my oh, God. Oh, I'm sure. Exhausting. I know it is. And I remember taking notes, you know, at the beginning and I would sit there and I, I, I would think of myself as uh, one of those food processors. <laughs> you know, all I did was take notes constantly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at the mm -hmm. time, we, you know, I would let everybody record, you know, so you can go mm -hmm. back to your recording. Yeah. Which unfortunately is not uh, given to people. The case yeah, yeah. But, um, the the point the um, point I was trying to make is, I just go and I write absolutely nothing. I just mm. sit there and listen, and occasionally there'll be something interesting, and I would say, okay, that's worth. It. I want to research this. I want. I want to like delve. You know, and I'll write it down. But and people are looking at me like there's something like really odd. You know, and how come I'm you know, there's 50 or more people in the room and they're all like literally writing like at the speed of, or typing at the speed of food processors. I'm like, you know, and, and then I start asking, how often are you looking back at these notes? Like how, how much can, because I know for myself, I have tons of notes, which you've seen also. Um, I have tons of notes. I mean, I've got, I've got piles, you know, like I've got three feet worth of notes. Um, you know, just from Jeffrey, and I'm like, I can't even, I can't even read most of this stuff. So you know, maybe to be a little easier on ourselves and just allow ourselves. You know, we absorb what we can, and you know, doesn't matter what I'll write and what I'll supposedly intellectually understand. If I didn't res, if it didn't permeate me, if it didn't have a chance yet, I'm not going to be able to use it, no matter how much I know the subject and how many books I read about it. You know, so yeah. You know, um, one more quick comment about yes. yin and yang and all of that, which is yes. yes, absolutely. It's about whether it's me internally or is it the world. The other piece of it is it yin or yang? Is it do I have the resources? Do I or do I perceive myself having the resources to carry this through, or do I have the energy to carry it through? Mm -hmm. And that's. That, yeah. That's why sometimes both 
you know, both the yin chow, the yang chow, the yin way, the yang way seem like they overlap a tremendous amount. But the, the, the distinction for me is resources, yin versus energy yang. Mm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Abby. All right. Well, enjoy the week. And you too. We'll talk soon. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.